What's good, everybody? It's your boy, one and only Kabad International. You already know. If you don't know, now you know. I'm here with my brother, Nando, Fernando Cops from Jacksonville, Florida. How you doing, brother? Welcome to the show. I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Thank you for having me, man. Thank you, brother. It was nice to see you after two years in a Connecticut Barber Expo. Yeah. And uh, you are doing now Jacksonville... Ja uh, Jacksonville Elite Barber Expo July 31st. That's correct. That's correct. I'm I'm I have the pleasure to be in the creator of Jackson Elite Barber Expo here in Jacksonville, Florida. Yeah, tell us about your expo because uh last year I missed it, but yeah. before before that year you I was over it, yeah. there. Yep. Yeah. Tell us to our viewers and listener how you start this expo and uh What's good about your expo? Yeah, so like so like Kabat said, um, his brand was there. This is the first time that he's actually going to be in the building, so I'm very very happy for that. Um, but the year the the the, the show started three years ago. You know, it started uh, right before the pandemic, um, and it happened in uh, February 16th, I believe. That was my first show, and uh, right after everything started shutting down because of COVID and all that stuff. So my show was the last show. And then yep. a whole and then a whole year happened. And then I wasn't gonna do Jack Silly Barbex, but I wasn't gonna do it. Like I mean the pandemic, everything was going on. So I was like, I'm not gonna do it. Um so next year, even though we didn't have a lot of places and stuff that we could do it, um yep. I ended up doing it last year too. Um, we had a little bit of troubles because they closed our venue last minute due to COVID. We had, um, you know, a lot of people in one place, light kept going down and stuff. So, um, you know, I, it was great because we had a lot of people, but we, there's a lot of stuff that we could have done better. So um, I made a commitment to myself and I made to the, a commitment to the, not only to the people at Jacksonville, but all the surrounding areas that, um, I'm going to come back again and I'm going to come back stronger and, and harder. So I decided from now on, my show is always going to be in July. My in show July. is always is going to be in July. Why? Because July is summer. Everybody wants to be in Florida. Yep. You know, people is visiting. Kids are at school. <laughs> like, you know, everybody want to have fun. Yeah. I'm also too excited for that, too. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so... not going to mix uh, this expo ever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And 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 I'm I'm happy you say that that you're not gonna miss it because that's exactly what we want to do. You know, I've been partnering up with people like Jay Majors, Pacinos, and stuff like that, and I've been getting a lot of mentoring from them. And you know, it's it's yep. truly humbling to to get them to be on my corner and kind of give me advice and all that stuff. And that's what we're trying to do. You know, we're not um, the show that has ten thousand people, eight thousand people yet, but we're going there. You know, that's the transition that we're going, you know, we take this very seriously. This is a business already. We want to do it every single year. We want to be better. We want to bring more people. We want to bring more excitement. That's exactly why we created the Barber Hall of Fame for this year. You know, next year is going to be a two day event for Jackson Lee Barber Expo. And if you see, um, I, 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 my mentor and one of the people that I always look up to is Jay Majors, you know, and we've yep. been able to sit down and talk and, um, Jay did the Barber Grammys and I was like, man, this is amazing that the people yeah. can come and party and have fun and, you know, all of these good stuff. Um, so I decided to add something to the industry and I was like, what, what a better way than add something else um, than the um, Barber Grammys. Now we can do the Barber Hall of Fame, you know, yeah. and the idea, the idea of that is to um, show the good, um, the good talent that we have in the barbering industry and you know what we're able to do you know we want to do red carpet we want to do um people doing speeches of what they do all of that stuff we want to do it so the idea yep. is big then the dream is big so we just got to keep working and, and grinding and getting better yeah and uh, you know when you appreciate your industry and you know recognize your people even if it's yeah. uh barbers barbershop owners and uh related industry people and uh, people you know feel happy and they work more hard like yeah 
they think like in 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 our industry somebody is out there who appreciate us and you know yeah. recognize us yeah yeah like like you said the, these shows are extremely difficult to do too you know because like like i started by myself uh, you know i had help from my brother and stuff like that but doing such a mega show is so difficult so like i look up a lot to jay majors because you know to putting a show like that is crazy you know so um i think the the bar is set high we need to keep working really really hard and, and yep. bringing the best expo and the best things for um daxonville but um that's what we want to do that's what we want to move forward and this is for the people like you said you know this is for the barbers this is for the barber shops and for people to appreciate it and and, and fall in love more with the industry yeah and you know we get together all barbers and you know networking in the grammys and we meet and made a lot of connections yeah yeah and, and not only barbers man it's like i'm telling people like whenever you go to jack silly barber expo at least i can speak for me i can speak for everybody else you know we have people that are going to be educating on marketing we have people that are going to be educating on nfts on cryptocurrency on real estate we got people that are going to have vendor tables for insurance you know retire um um retirement insurance you know health insurance all of that stuff these are things that barbers need information because mm -hmm. the better that we educate and the more that we continue to grow the better that we can be you know so i believe that the barber industry is the backbone of the community so um that's why i'm putting everybody together so we can take those and and to to our benefit you know yeah and uh you know this industry we can learn from each other yeah and uh, i always tell people like i came here in 2014 and uh, i start selling scissors on the streets in camden yeah. so i don't know about social media only facebook and uh, one of the hairstylist girls she asked me do you have instagram I said, I don't have even driving license. <laughs> <laughs> you asking me Instagram? I say Facebook. She said, no, this kind of in America, we use a lot in hairstylist, yeah. barbering industry. Yeah. Uh, we use a lot. If you have that and uh, you can get business. And yeah. she was a young girl. I still follow her. She's a hairstylist. And she showed me how to download the app and how to create yeah. your Instagram. And uh, she she said, just wherever you go, and uh, you just take a picture and just upload it your products. No. And uh, I start from her. I say, okay, let's take a picture. I take a picture, and, and in 2014, 15, and I start posting on my Instagram. Yeah. And then I connected with you, with a lot of other barbers, and uh, and they are now big names too because in 2014, 15. These big names was also starting up that time too. And I just uploaded pictures and learned from like you guys, you know, Barber, yeah. how you edit your videos and uh, how to do podcast. I just start now. And uh, social media is, you know, very important for any business, even barbering, barber supply, yeah. any business you have. Yeah, no. And, 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 and like, like you said, like, you know, like, like, going out there networking and all that stuff like a lot of people don't know but i've been in the industry 14 years you know yeah. i started cutting hair when i was 13 so i was uh, you know a young kid i'm only 26 <laughs> right now so um it's like i tell people like you know like you said we're getting we're going out there taking pictures trying to get to be known and yeah. stuff like that so i'm on the same boat you know this is the first time that this thing is paying off that we're doing great so i understand 100 percent what you mean yeah and through social media you know you are in florida i am in new jersey and we are connected yeah. with, with each other yeah and yeah so social media and a is lot great. of people we got a lot of following from new jersey I, I was i was impressed like like yesterday i put a post on on instagram and i was like hey where, where are you coming from and people were like california utah texas new jersey connecticut chicago I'm like, man, people is coming from everywhere. And that, yeah. that that's a dream. That's a dream come true, you know, because people said, oh, Jacksonville is not the city and stuff like that. And to have people traveling from everywhere to come here, I mean, that's that's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. Uh, I met Pacino and uh, Lost Cut It and uh, Mr. Official first time yeah. in, uh, in a Pensokan Bar Expo, you know, 
the one of my fr- uh, friend tone cut he did expo over there in new jersey and i yeah. even don't know them who they are and uh, I, because i was new in this country because uh, everybody was taking pic- pictures with the pacino los carded and mr official moody and uh, i say i think they are some kind of famous people let me take a pictures too <laughs> so i just went there i take a picture and i upload on my instagram and i got more attention you know yeah yeah so that's how you know people related with you because uh, yeah. if you are with some kind of you know uh, uh, big names in the industry so that's how yeah. so- social media changed my life and uh, now you know i have a, as a barber supply business i have my own products so i have customers in canada in uh, london in europe india sometime and even yeah. in, in in gulf so the world is shrinking right now yeah yeah yeah, uh, yeah. like like you said social media does change your life you know like it can help you and 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 if you use it correctly well um it can take you to the next level and that and that's exactly what it did for me like you know taking videos with lows cut it with jay majors and all these people has has launched my business and my career to a whole nother level so i mean it's it's amazing to yeah. to be where we at thanks to social media you know yeah and uh you know in barbering back of the day like a 20 years ago barbering yeah. was not a cool thing it was it like wasn't. an old people thing yeah. and now like you young generation jumped in the business and they bringing new shine in the industry yeah. Yeah. you know back of the day people don't feel proud to telling people i'm a barber no yeah but now people telling you know to the others yeah. i'm a barber nah. yeah you now know? you're a barber now 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 everybody likes the industry the industry is growing and cool. people are getting people sponsorships are cool now. barbering yeah. <laughs> being a barber is cool thing now yeah 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 it is it is so that because is education more education in here more you know upgraded tools are there and uh, it's, it's it's like it's like anything it's like anything anything is gonna um you know get better and it's gonna grow like like for example in any industry no industry was the same 100 years ago you know everything has grown everything has innovated and everything has gotten better i feel like um you know companies like baby list bringing out clippers signing people assigning them to yeah. to a clipper you know and having their face on the billboards that changed the game you know um yeah ch- um having clippers that charge and you know taking out the cord i mean it's so much has changed but we're going the right direction you know and um it's amazing to to even know these people and and learn from these people so just like anything we're, it's going to keep growing it's going to keep getting better and we got to keep inspiring and educating people and that's exactly why i did jacksley barber expo yeah and uh, you know uh, these barbering events they are good for any industry like uh, i made a video about connecticut barber expo because yeah. that was the expo where i start my business you know in the hood lot of barbers told me you need to go to connecticut barber expo yeah and i say what is that they say this is a kind of event it's like a super bowl of barbering so yeah. i say okay so you know i split money with the uh, with my buddy so i don't had that time 300 dollar to pay up front so yeah. we go half and a half and uh, later on somebody missed that show and the booth was empty and j major give me my own booth and rui they give me my own booth they say okay you you want to go there i say i don't have money they say it's okay you know just take yeah, that they booth. just want to fill and it out yeah yeah i was selling i was so happy <coughs> and from that day i never look back and that's yeah. why i try to go every barbering event yeah Yeah. Because, I'm glad I'm, I'm glad to have you man. Like you know, we we met in TT Bar Rex, but we met in a couple of other shows. So I'm yeah. glad that you can finally be here yeah. in Florida, man. Yeah. I like Florida, you know. And uh w- what else uh, uh you will do in the expo? It's a barbering competition too. What kind of competition? So so the way that we're going to break it out this year is going to be like this on July 30th. 
which is the Saturday, the night before the event. We're going to have a showcase and pre-party at the, my barbershop that I own here locally. The name of the barbershop is Fade and Cones Barber Lounge. It's in St. John's. We love you. know we're going to have food trucks. We're going to have car meets. Um, we're going to have uh, a cigar lounge trailer outside, you know, for one of our sponsors. Um, and then after that, the next morning, then we're going to have the the educational seminar and then after the educational seminar we're going to have bar battles and vendors and everything and then that night we're going to have an after party at Myth nightclub right down the street from the, the the venue so i mean it's going to be a great event it's going to be something well organized it's going to be great so i suggest that people buy their tickets get information you know and come out and network like a lot of people be like oh no it's just a showcase or stuff it doesn't matter anywhere that you can go, go network, give out your Instagram, yep. give out your business card, you know, talk to people. You never know who you, who you could know, who you could meet in these events. So you got to take advantage of those things. Yeah. And uh, how much is uh, for entrance uh, general admission for your. So general, we, we got three different type of tickets. Um, we got general admission. We have uh educational seminar and then we got Lee VIP. General admissions is only going to get you into the after uh to the to the Jackson Lee Barber Expo battle. So it's going to let you go into the battle. The educational seminar is only going to give you entry to the ed- educational seminar. And the elite VIP is limited. It it gives you entrance to the educational seminar and it gives you entrance to the bar battle and it gives you a swag bag full of products as well. Mm-hmm. From different companies. Yeah, VIP even better because I was v- in, I was in Connecticut Expo and a lot of my barbers were there. And I said, yeah. how much you pay? They, they told me, but we got sh- Babyliss Shaver. We got this yeah. product. We got this product. I said, that's cheap. Yeah, VIP is better. <laughs> yeah, VIP is better. I agree. I agree 100%. VIP at my, uh, so general entry at my show is going to be 40. Educational seminar is going to be 80. And the elite VIP is going to be 150. 150 good yeah and uh, when your show is starting and when is ending so the show starts the the pre-party starts saturday um at seven and uh and the event the main event starts at eight, doors open at 8 30 in the morning for the seminar and they end i think it was like a 1 30 or two and then doors open and the um doors open at the barber battle at two and then it ends at nine after party is going to be from 10 to two mm-hmm. 10 to two yeah and uh, what kind of competitions categories are in the barber so battle? we have fast fade best student um which is for student um barbers we're gonna have pompadour or comb over we're gonna have low fade we're gonna have freestyle design and we're gonna have Tag team. Tag team means two people get to cut in yeah. one hand. Yeah. And uh, most, uh, how much are the prices? Just to let people know. How much is the price to enter? Or what Enter are you and if they win, what, what they are getting. So, you know, um, if, if... So, it's $100 to enter for, for professional categories. And then for the student, it's $75. So first place gets money. So if you pay a hundred, you're gonna get two hundred back for first mm-hmm. place. So you're gonna double up. You're gonna get um, uh, caliber clippers. Mm-hmm. Um, you're gonna get you're gonna get uh, products from Roda, and you're gonna get trophies. And um, I believe that the the winner of the freestyle design is gonna get a shelf full full of products. Um, no, nice. for, for, from Rhoda va- uh, valued at $1,600 yeah. and, um, there's going to be baby list giveaways. Um, I believe that there's a- also other stuff. I-, I I don't, I don't remember too much because we, I got so much in my head, yeah. but, um, at least you're going to get trophy first place is going to get trophy money and they're going to get products, you know? Yeah. And then second place is going to get clippers, baby list. Um, they're going to get a trophy and they're going to get products as well. Yeah. Yeah, that will be nice. I think to hear that now barbers are getting more recognized. Yeah. I think I should start barbering too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, man. You need to. Yeah. Tell us about you, how you start barbering, how man. your journey start. 
So I started cutting hair. I was 13 years old when I came to America for the first time. I'm originally from Fajardo, Puerto Rico. Uh -huh. um, I was there till I was 13 years old. And then my mother wanted to give us, you know, a better lifestyle and uh, a better education and stuff like that. So she brought us to Jacksonville. My grandpa had just passed away and he left us a con and he, he left us a Connor Clipper. So since we couldn't get haircuts because, you know, at the time we couldn't really afford it. We didn't know anybody that cut hair. Um, my brother was my first client and my toilet was my first hair. Mm -hmm. So um, I started cutting hair at the age of 13. And In the home. I, yeah, I started messing up my brother and myself, <laughs> like, you know, just learning and, and keep getting better. But at the age of 15, I was called by a local barbershop and then I started cutting hair in uh in the local barber shop and you know kept cutting hair um went to high school and everything like that and a little bit after i was started working in the barber shop my mom was diagnosed with cancer uh -huh. oh. when uh when my mother got diagnosed with cancer the only thing that i had was barbering you know i didn't have anything else that that was the only thing that i knew and um you know kept cutting and kept getting bigger in the industry and and trying to learn it and at the age of 18, my mother passed, you know, my mother died. And uh, when I was 18, she was oh. 44 at the time. And uh, my dad was in South Korea with the military. So when my mom died, I was pretty much homeless. I didn't know where to be. So like wherever, wherever I could be, that's where I was going to stay. And one day I said, you know, um, this is all I know what, how to do, which is barbering. I'm going to take this serious and, and I'm never going to look back and that's Hello. Yeah, you're back now. Can you hear me? Yep. yep. Yeah, I don't know what happened here, but yeah, um, I I never looked back, brother. You know, I I, I just kept doing that and and. And it went great. Yeah. That's good. So you start from home to messing up people here. Yeah, I started messing my brother up, my little brother. <laughs> and today my little brother is my videographer. Oh, nice. You are have like a family. Yeah, like a family. That's, yeah, that, that's that's what it's all. About. Yeah. That's uh, that's you know, I always tell people just start before you're ready you know even you're yeah. messing up here and if you have a product you're messing up in your products just start before ready and whatever you have just do it don't wait like uh, doing the big thing and if you will wait for big thing you will do nothing yeah yeah every, That's it. Every, every big big thing start from the little <laughs> yeah you, you just got to start somewhere you know you just yeah. got to start somewhere it yeah. doesn't matter it doesn't matter you make a way so like when i started um you know what th this year when i started traveling and stuff i saw everybody with camera guys with people in camera and camera and camera and then i was like man i, I need to get more content out you know yeah so um, you see me too with the <laughs> mic and interviewing yeah. people yeah so I, I was like you know i talked to my brother i was like hey man like you know I know you're great at technology. You're great with computers and stuff. How would you like to be my, my videographer? He was like, man, that's great. Like I would love to. So um, now my brother is my videographer and he records everything. So all the videos that you see with Jay Majors and stuff, my brother is the one creating them. So, you know, I told him, Hey, you don't have everything. You're not where you want to be, but we got to start doing it some somewhere, you know? Something. So yeah, you, you you start, you start with something and then you keep growing and keep getting keep better growing. until you get to be at the, yeah best level that you can that's how you tell people you know just start before you're ready i, yeah. I know a lot of my friends you know even in my back home country and even here so a lot of my friends they just trying to do big thing they are waiting for yeah. a big boom and uh i i i tell them my idea i'm gonna do this oh that's too little we need to do big thing and uh, they are doing nothing basically <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I just had, when I start my business, I start with the 
two hundred dollar worth shears. Yeah, I I I had it, and I go to the streets, you know, and selling people, showing to the people, and uh, I was trying to learn English too, you know, at the yeah. same time, and my wife write it down on a paper. In America, how you introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Kabar. Uh, I have hair cutting shears. That's how I started up, and yeah. then I keep growing, keep growing, and and the people who are who are thinking that time like we're gonna do big thing, they are doing nothing. Yeah, yeah, you gotta yeah. do something. Yeah, and uh, and when I came in the industry, I saw a lot of big names in the shear industry. You know. Yeah, it's, they're selling shears for thousands. Yeah, and uh, in my town too, and in barber supply, I had a people like a twenty twenty years, twenty twenty years they've been doing the business, and they are like a big in the game. Yeah, yeah. And uh, when I start selling my barber supply on the street, people say, "Do you know those people are doing that stuff from twenty years, and they are million years." And you yeah. are you have a regular car, Toyota, and you in in your trunk you are selling blades and uh, yeah. cool care and that stuff. That's not gonna work. Yeah. And uh, you know I was in social media active, and but the and uh, I know how to talk people and uh, give people good customer service. Yeah. And uh, they was more old fashioned because they was not hungry in the industry. And I start selling shears, taking pictures with barbers, uploading them, promoting their business, and yeah. they become my friends, like a family. And uh, I read Bible, you know, in the Bible, David beat Goliath. I, yeah. I told one of my barbers, you know, he says, "Stop! You, 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 you will not successful. They are big people." I said, "No. If if David can beat Goliath, yeah. I can beat my uh, my." You know competition in the market too. Yeah. Dave, you know David have a slingshot. Yeah. You know, and the Goliath was a big guy with the sword. Yeah. And yeah he was yeah. laughing at the at the at the. If you read the Bible, he was laughing at the David like huh? this yeah. skinny little guy. Yeah. He's a bring big people. You know, big warriors. Yeah. And Goliath was a shepherd, and he had a slingshot, and he hit him, and he and he killed him. Yeah. So yeah, in the David, industry, yeah. same thing. If we know whatever resource, whatever we have, and we have a passion, and we know how we can put that thing in the work, and yeah. we can beat our, you know, big competitions, our competitors too. Yeah, yeah. If, if if you got favor and you and you're good at what you do, um, there's no no reason why you would you couldn't be successful. You know, it's all up to you. It's all yeah. up to how bad you want it. So if you want it bad, if you want to get it, if you want to grow, you know, it's all up to you. Mm -hmm. We all have the same opportunity. Yeah. W who was your mentor in the industry when you start? Man, wow. Um, when I started, I would say I would say the the person that I would admire a lot was like Pacinos, you know. But yeah. you mean men mentor, like people started giving me advice and something. Um, I would say the first person that I met, that I met in person, that took me to their barbershop and everything, the big, big person was Yandy Blends from Orlando. Uh -huh. Yandy Blends was the first person. And, you know, he was like, you know, you could get whatever you want. And, you know, whenever he brought Sky Salon, um, he let me into the seminar and then I met the seminar. But a lot of people have been very, very helpful for me, man. I look up to Jay Majors. I look up to Pacino's. Um, and I, I look up to Chris Bosio, you know. Yeah. Chris I, I Bosio, look up to yeah. all those people. He, Chris Bosio is just different, I, man. He's just I great. learned all of, from all of them, you know, Pacino, yeah. Jay Major. And um, it's been eight years. That, and I've been looking at them, you know, how they grew. I listened to their story very careful. Yeah. And... Uh, you know, and that inspired you too. You me too. You know. Yeah, yeah. So that's good. That's how you you know started up your business. Yeah. And uh, when you start your business as a barbershop owner. So, I was eight. Like I said, I was eighteen. My mom passed, and I started working. And then I, 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 you know, I asked God, like, you know, I need, I need a good job, like, you know, a, a job. And then I got called by 
Art of Shaving. Art of I got called by Art of Shaving and then I started working at Art of Shaving. So I started meeting some high profile people. Um, and when I started doing that, I made, I met some football players, you know, and stuff like that. And then I met this, uh, person. He was a, uh, he was a trainer. His name is Blake McCoy. He's the owner of total body bands. He's part mm -hmm. owner of total body band. And, um, he tells me, Hey, listen, my barber, is, um, has been late. He's being irresponsible. So if you could be responsible, I have you with the top millionaires in the city. So I cut his hair, and then a couple of months later, he tells me, hey, my mentor is coming to see you. Mm -hmm. So his mentor comes and then invites, you know, invites me to his house, and then I cut his kids' hair since they were babies and everything. He's Indian, so they got the tradition, you got to shave the baby's head. Indian, so, like American Indian or from no, New no, Delhi? He, <laughs> no, he's, he's Indian. He's like from India. So I, I saved his kid's head and stuff. And he was like, what, what, how, you know, you need to quit. Like you need to open your own business. And I'm like, man, I'm making money. He's like, no, once you open your business, you're going to make real money. Mm -hmm. So I started, I started praying, you know, I started, you know, asking God, how should I do it? And then when I, at the age of 22, I opened my business at 2018, I opened Fade and Cones Barber Lounge with six chairs, something small, small TVs, everything, small mirrors and everything. And today we have 12 tears in there, you know, so um, it's great. a great shop. We got the TVs that we want. You know, we, man, I literally invested all my time and money into, into that, you know. Mm -hmm. Ever you regret when you start a business and you was in the middle and you said, oh, I should change my profession. If I regret it? Ever, yeah. Man... I've never regret it. I might think like, man, I need to slow down, but this is why I don't regret things. It's because my brother told me this one time. He's like, you know, would you change something that you did five years ago? He's like, you know, what happened? You know where you're at now, but what happened if you would have took another decision? You don't know if you could be worse. You don't know. So yeah. like, I, I, I just live with the decisions that I take. Um, I haven't taken the best decisions always, but you know, that's part of being a human and that's part of of getting better and that's part of growing you know um i have flaws and i have um things that i struggle with and i try to get better every year so and every day that i live so um no i never i never regretted it um i i i misinterpreted it like i thought it was less um hard like you know i thought it was less difficult but um you know, it, it, it was pretty hard, but I started, I kept working, I kept pressing and, and, and I reached the success that I wanted to reach, you know? Yeah. What advice uh, would you like to give to new barbershop owners? What, what advice? Yeah. You know, uh, the barbers who are, are thinking to start up their new barbershop, their own barbershop yeah. as a full-time barber. Just, so what advice just, would you give them? Just be patient, you know. Like a lot of the times when we start something, we want something now, 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 now. You don't need to have everything answered. Like it's like I tell people, like, oh, let me open a barbershop with 20 tears. I'm like, no, just open, you know, small and then keep growing because you're going to spend all this money and not have any capital. And then when you don't have capital, then you're going to have an empty chair and stuff. So, you know, as people keep going, grow your business, invest, pay yourself and then save money and invest it back into the business. My advice would be just invest back into yourself as much as you can. You know, money's not doing anything in the bank, do investments, you know, whether it's in the barbershop, whether it's buying a home, whether it's preparing for your retirement, just pay yourself and try to invest in yourself so you can keep yep. growing. You know, and just and just be positive and and if you know, because the, the only thing is not cutting hair is, is is being a inspiration to people, you know. Like not not only barbers, but the people that come to your share, you want to help them, you wanna give them a good message, you wanna make sure that they're good. So, you know, just invest in yourself and work really, really hard and try to help everybody that comes to your chair. Yep. And a lot of barbers, you know, I see uh, uh, being a barber supply, 
I see yeah. a lot of barbers. Their barber shop is busy, and yeah. they have good barbers, but they don't upgrade their barber shops. Yeah, exactly. The I chairs agree. are terrible, and you know the benches that uh, chairs where the cl- clients sit down, yeah. and you know, and by bathroom don't have a paper towel, no soap. Yeah, that yeah. that 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 should be unacceptable, you know. And 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 it's like I tell my team, I have a team of eleven guys, you know. Um, make sure that I'm 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 grounded, you know. Make sure that that you guys tell me, hey, this needs to be, you know, because at the end of the day, we have a role as leaders, you know. And we have to, if we're gonna, if I'm gonna do something, I'm gonna do it right. I'm not telling you that everything I've done in the barbershop is correct, but I'm telling you that I've gotten better. So yeah, like you said. My barbershop has been painted in four years. I think it's been painted four times, three or four times. So every mm-hmm. year I paint it. Every yeah, year I take yep. everything out, mm-hmm. paint it, you know, make it look brand new. You know, that's the you know, people spend money. A lot of people want to charge more money on hair because they want to charge more money for services and stuff, but they don't get new clippers. They don't want to invest in chairs. You know, there's only one way to do that. It's, they it's don't change the blade sometime and customer, yeah. you know, when you're cutting their hair, they pull up people's hair yeah you have to you yeah. have to and a bad customer service sometimes because this is very important in the customer service i yeah. see you know because i see barbers sometimes they have a headphones on and a new yeah. customer just walk in and they even don't say they don't even, yeah. yeah that's wrong that's bad they don't even greet them yeah sometime and that's uh, the a new new customer is there and he he look at them and they keep busy sometime on the phone you know <laughs> talking to people <laughs> yeah yeah so you know new new people who's starting their business make sure you greet your customers clients yeah and you yeah. know give them a good uh, ask them what they like you know uh, they have to wait smiley face you know <laughs> Happy yeah, to that, help. That, that, that's very important, you know, making sure that your client feels welcome, that your clients feels happy, you know, because you don't know what they're going through that day. So by you yeah. telling them, hey, how are you? Welcome in. You know, um, I always tell my guys, when you answer the phone, make sure that you say your name and say, how, how, how's your day going? How may I assist you? You know, so the way yeah. you answer a phone is like, hey, how are you? My name is Nando. How may I assist you today? Yeah. You know? Sometimes but, um, a lot of bar, uh, new, you know, client, he, walking they come in that they ask, uh, can i get haircut and uh sometimes yeah. barbara said i'm busy i'm booked yeah. no you know you can talk nicely to your yeah. the client you know this time i'm busy you know but uh, this is my number you can you know schedule in future and yeah. if you give give them a good vibes and welcoming you know your attitude he might come back yeah. and maybe he bring his brother-in-law yeah. his brother his relatives his friends he says oh these are nice people i agree one thing that you should do is like as soon as they come in you should greet them let them know how they're doing and you know do you have an appointment or are you just walking in if they have an appointment who do you have an appointment with if they're just walking in well give me just a second let me see who's available and to see if we can take care of you right now if not we're gonna see our next time available so you can book your appointment you know yeah. um but one thing i have squire so like let's say if people walk into the barbershop and they haven't booked squire gives you this qr code that you yeah. scan it with your phone and then the and then the website comes out in their phone so you know it's really um they just book you online friendly yeah yeah we take walk-ins too you know like if we don't have nobody we take them right away but let's say if they walk in and we don't have time to service them at the moment where we'll tell them hey you can book through this link and you know they'll book and come later on that day mm-hmm. yep so c- customer service is very important any business yeah. you know In any business yeah any business yeah. and uh, uh how financially they should prepare if they want to be full-time barber or barbershop owner financially yeah what advice you will give to them man just save save as much if you if you're trying to build a, a business just try to save as much as you can i mean you know cash to be honest, credit. To, a lot to, of to people be, like only cash and don't accept cash app don't accept when oh you say you say payment for the for yes. the barber stuff okay yeah so you got to have every every source of of payment you know like like i have i take card i take cash i take venmo 
I take Cash App, you know, I have an ATM in the barbershop, you know, there's many ways that you can pay. There's many yep. ways. So um, the more that you have, the better it is because people feel more comfortable. Me you know, um, if, you know, the way that I have card, once you book your appointment, you can pay your appointment right there and you don't have to worry about it, you know. Yeah. But a lot of people, you know, in the barbershop or in barber supply business, they don't accept uh, credit cards and or cash app or other. In the beauty of supply? Payment. Yeah. They say, oh, cash is good. It feels good. Yeah. Smell good in yeah. our hand. So we can save some taxes too. So what yeah, do but, you, you, but you like as a that, business? To be honest, I like, I like having cards sometimes. And the reason that I like having cards is because I want to have that paper trail. You know, if you want to buy a house, if you want to buy a car, if you want to have investments, you need to show your money in order for you to get something. Yep. That's okay. You can have some cash, you know, and then that cash you invested in. But you need to have some type of credit card or something or, or for, for you to collect that payment. Transaction for your a, 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 lot, a lot of people say, oh, I can't buy a house. I can buy this. Well, that's because you cannot buy something and the government doesn't even know that you can afford it, you know. So you have yeah. to be able to prove it. So be smart. And that's one of the things that we're going to be teaching at, at Jack Philly Barber Expo, you know, um, when you make money, how you invest your money, how much money do you save? Where do you put it? You know, you pay yourself first, stuff like that, you know. So all of these things we need to teach people because, yeah. of course, um, the barbering industry it, it, um, doesn't know too much. So we want to make sure that we can help them in that way as well. Yeah, because, you know, when pandemic happened, and a lot of barbers and barber yeah. supplies you know my friends we are same in in, in same industries yeah. i i have a habit i always pay tax yeah. and i always do you know deposit in the bank and i through them you know so you can get loans yeah business you can grow yeah. more i agree and yeah. uh, and when pandemic happened you know the government was giving you loans yeah i was big loan I was big happy. Stuff. I was getting, you know, money from government big time. I <laughs> had a small little, uh, you know, barber supply van. And after after uh, pandemic, I got jackpot. And, <laughs> and that loan was forgiven. And yeah. uh, I, I bought a big van, you know, the yeah. Ford, Ford Cargo high roof yeah. one, the big one I bought. Yeah. And uh, I was happy and I, I, I doubled my business. So But they that, was asking because... me how how you got it i said because i pay tax i show bank my money yeah. that i'm making so when i yeah. apply for online for government you know help and uh, my barbering, industry yeah. barbering industry was hurt in the pandemic so they approved my loan yeah. and they give me wow. loan and they forgive me so yeah. they That's was it. yeah i agree yeah my friend a lot of my friend were regretting because yeah. that time in pandemic they was cutting home like a hundred dollar haircut They were buying expensive sneakers, a lot of good clothes, but I was saving my money. Yeah. And uh, yeah, after pandemic, good. I started two, two barber supply vans and added up wow. more products in my brand. That's good. So, that's you know, good. Because, and uh, still now, I don't have my personal car. I, I have my two vans, barber supply. Wherever I go, I have two vans. Because yeah. if, right now, I'm growing in my business. So if I buy, you know, Audi or Mercedes Benz, it's going to take more money out of my pocket. And uh, and uh, I want to sp uh, spend my money in my business. So my business, you know, van can give me money. That's how I'm investing my money in the business. Yeah, that's 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 how it is, you know, because you did it correctly. You you paid your taxes you did everything on time so um everything went good and that's exactly how 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 it has to be done you know so yeah. you can't because if you didn't pay your taxes if you didn't put the money in your bank well that's your own fault you know yeah and especially if you are immigrant so only immigrant mentality people know that because when you get your citizenship they ask you first question did you pay your tax every year So if you are an immigrant, you have to pay tax. Yeah, have to. Yeah. I, they, I agree 100%. Yeah, if you are a barber or you are living in America, they're going to ask you first question. 
do you pay tax every year if you yeah. miss your tax they might say no to your citizenship so that's how you know a lot of in, in our industry you know a uh, lot of my, my barber supplies you know the old fashioned people they also don't accept paypal cash app they want to do only cash payment yeah and uh, i take the advantage you know i i accept all type of payments yeah sometimes a barber need a clipper like a 200 dollar worth clipper and he don't have a cash he said i have credit card sometime my competitor he says no i don't accept uh, credit card so yeah. you know i have my own swiper with me all the time so i just take that and i grow in my business yeah that's yeah. good i grow my that's sales good, like that so same thing in barbering you know if you are a barber accept all type type of payments paypal cash yeah. app you know every single you, thing that you can yeah yeah the more and you have can, the better because the more people is going to buy with you because they know that you have different sources yeah to pay through apple pay yeah android yeah. pay they got everything i accept even cryptocurrency too <laughs> that's good <laughs> that's good yeah so yeah so this is good you know in the industry like you you know young people they are coming in the industry and uh, our barbering industry is growing more I'm not yeah. a barber but I'm related to the barbering because I have a barber supply business. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I because agree. of you guys we are in the industry. Yeah. So That's you know. Good. If comp- uh, if uh, and because and because of you guys we're able to have all the nice clippers and, yeah. and straight razors <laughs> okay. and you know. Yeah, shears all the good stuff. Yeah. Yeah, so we are connecting with each other. So sometime you know when i go to the barber expo i don't feel like i'm a barber supply guy i feel like i'm yeah. a barber too <laughs> that's good <laughs> yeah so so nando so what's your future plan for this expo you want to you want to keep doing in the jacksonville um yeah i mean i don't mind expanding and going to other places but right now i'm just going to enjoy put in my city on the map giving love to my city to the city that saw me grow up to the city that gave me home to the city that gave me my child to the city that uh saw me grow up so um that's the plan now i mean if if we can grow it of course that's something that i'm going to talk later on with my team with my family yeah and i figure out where we can go but you know i i really want to make jacksley barber expo the biggest expo that we can have in florida mm-hmm. you know yep. in florida so whenever you talk about education whenever you talk about expos whenever you talk about vending um i want the name of nando 787 mentioned everywhere you go in, in yep. florida not only in florida all over the nation um yep. once we have done that uh, um that is the commitment that i have with the city why well, i think that we can go to other venues and grow it and probably go to yep. different places but you know i'm i'm the type of person i have plans but i focus on the now i can only i can only worry about what's going on right now and 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 what i'm able to provide to the industry right now so right now i feel like we're doing great and hopefully with the blessing of god we can continue to grow and get better yeah. and try to bless other people yeah and it's inspiring you know how how your story start your mom you know passed away when you yeah. was 18 and you you just start keep cutting hair and you came from Puerto Rico yeah you bo- yeah you born in Puerto Rico i was born in Puerto Rico yes yeah i'm yeah, going to Puerto Rico uh, end of this month that's good you can have fun my wife is Puerto Rican my wife is yeah. Puerto Rican that's good Okay. Arecibo, you know. So <laughs> this is my first time even my wife is Puerto Rican, she's going first yeah. time to the Puerto Rico too. That's good, man. That's good. Yeah. I, uh, I enjoy it. Isa my capurias, isa, you capuria, know. you know. Aroco gandule, vechuela, totones, <laughs> panil, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's good. You're going to have fun, man. It's a blast. The people, <laughs> you know, people talk a lot about Puerto Rico and stuff like that, but man, I I feel like Puerto Rico has one of the nicest most happiest and, yeah. and sweetest people in the world you know once yep. you go there you're going to have fun and you're going to feel like at home yeah my family is puerto rican so i know you know that's that's <laughs> good that's good yeah the best people i love you know 
to being interact with them and uh, i have a yeah. lot of customers my barbers they are uh, puerto ricans very nice yeah. always nice to see them you know in the industry yeah they're so, good yeah so one day we will go to puerto rico too for sure san juan beauty show We san juan beauty day. show yep. yeah i met them in, in orlando premium show in 2000 2001 2021 yeah. i met them well i was talking to a company i'm not going to say too much but i've been talking to a couple of companies a lot a couple of companies been looking at my work and stuff so they were like would you like to go to orlando um would you like to go to san juan beauty show with us so i was like you know i would love to so that's something that is in the plans as well yeah So it's nice brother it was nice to talk with you uh and thank you for giving me your uh, yeah. you know time and you are a busy barber and you are yeah. i think you are pre- preparing your barber expo too and thank you so much for coming on live at short notice yeah thank you so much yeah thank Appreciate you guys you. remember guys july 31st jacksonville elite barber expo don't yeah. forget yeah i will be there meet me there all right all right brother thank you so good much night, good night